This picture was taken by good friends of ours uh, who have just returned from a short visit to Prague. What a city. The building, the architecture, the detail is just amazing. This is one of the pictures that was taken, uh, looking through, and but this one actually caught my eye because there is so much that we can actually get out of a picture like this. This is straight out of the camera, by the way. It wasn't shot in RAW. It was shot as a JPEG file. This is the original JPEG file, so thanks, John. And uh, let me show you. We're going to be using adjustment layers. Why use adjustment layers, I hear you say? Well, because it gives you the advantage of being able to do something and then come back in and adjust it. I've just gone to the layer menu, dropping down to new adjustment layer, clicking its levels, the one we're after for this particular one. The new layer, it's asking me if I want to give it a name, but I'm just going to click OK. There it is. That's the layers uh, panel or levels panel, should I call it? say if I just bring it out again right in a minute there's the layers panel that's what I was thinking of when I said what I just said and you can see the adjustment layer has gone in immediately above the background layer that we were working on so what we can actually do is if I just close this down if I want to access the levels panel again I simply double click on the layer thumbnail here back it comes brilliant or what Anyway, let's just pop this out of the way. I'm going to grab hold of it, drag it across, and just wait for those blue lines to come round. I can drop it in, clicking down, move it across on the tab there, and there it is. Right, so after all that, what is this actually showing? Well, as I said, the image looks a little bit flat and grey. Looking at this, which is a map of the pixels in the image, it's hardly surprising. There's a whole load of the lighter pixels missing here. There's even some of the darker mi pi pixels, pixels missing from this direction here. Looking at the center here, if we just drag and come along in conjunction with the bottom bar, I can get the word straight in a minute. You can see it's no wonder most of them are stacked up in that gray area. Right, if you click on this slider, this is going to introduce the lighter pixel. So click on it, moving it in, and as we move it across, you'll see the way it begins to brighten up. But you've got to be careful not to go too far. If I just press the Alt or the Option key, so I'm holding down Alt or Option, we can bring it across. Now when you start to see those colors coming through, the ones to avoid is white. But when we start to see some of the colors, that's about the range we want to bring it in there. Those colors are warning us when it's going to clip by clip. I mean, there's no detail in the pixels. It will just be solid color, so you do want to avoid those, particularly in the whites, which will be the highlights. Okay, let's do the same thing. We're going to click on the dark one. Again, pressing that Alter option. This time, we've got a white piece of paper, bringing it across. And again, when you come to this area, you can see the blues. There it is, the blacks there. That means if I release it, the black has gone solid in this area. So I'm just going to pull that back until we reach that sort of stage there. But to be honest, I prefer to do it a little bit more by eye and just pull that out a little bit there. Coming to the center slider, this is where we can balance things out a bit. You can see if I move it this way, we're introducing those darker pixels again from this direction. If I move it back the other way to the left, we we'll introduce introduce it. Come here. Thank you. We're introducing more of the lighter pixels, so just moving that across like that. And that looks pretty good there. Right, we've only gone 0, 4, so it's not a huge difference, but it does make a difference to the picture. That's the before, that's the after. Taking a look at our layers panel, there it is with the adjustment layer, completely independent. We're not sort of degrading, you can do whatever you like to the picture, you're not degrading your original image at all. Right, something else that's bothering me slightly with this picture is it's sloping. Yeah, the more I've been looking at it, the more I've noticed it's actually sloping from left through to right. Yes, you have a straightening tool. Try using it. It actually put Prague on a, about a 45 degree angle, which I don't think they'd be happy with. So what we're going to do is just make sure we're working on the background layer there. Picking up the crop tool, I'm going to run the crop tool over the image like this. With the crop tool, we've got rule of thirds. You've also got uh, grid. That could be pretty handy as well. So I'm clicking on grid. You've got these lines and you can actually see the way that the riverbank there is float, not floating, it's sinking from left to right. We just zoom in a bit as well. There it is. You can see the way it's just coming down there. Right. Let's take a look at straightening it out. We're going to go to back to the rule of thirds because I prefer using that one. 
coming into it we're just simply going to lift this up into this position like this until the bottom of it is just on that area there you can see as soon as I bring the cursor out the way it changes you got that bent arrow look let's just zoom in as well to this sort of area so we can see clearly what's going on I'm just going to click down and I'm going to twist it round a little bit just looking for that straight line to come across there that looks pretty good so does the vertical so I'm happy with that zooming out to this sort of area coming back clicking on the grab handle dragging it down and you'll notice that it's sloping down here we got little bits and pieces showing have you ever tried pulling it in and you just want a little tiny bit of this right press command shift control shift so with command shift control shift pressed you can come in and you can just take the smallest slither off the side again coming in just making sure I've got that sky again coming in just making sure I've got the side in there and then finally that little bit on there again just making sure I've got that tiny bit I think I came in a bit too far no I didn't that looks pretty good clicking the green tick pressing enter or return there it is taking a look I'm just going to come to the undo history that's before you've now got a straight sort of horizon line brilliant or what right for the next thing looking at the picture we've got some nice colors in there we're going to get the colors out in just a minute but looking at the rest of the picture when you start to look at it yeah you've got the detail in here you're coming through you've got the buildings then your eye starts to leave the picture it starts to come out because with such a light area in the sky there your eyes just going to wander off we can darken this down a little bit let's just come to the levels adjustment layer here you can also get to adjustment layers from this little half black half white there it is create new fill or adjustment layer clicking on this I'm going to go down to gradient when gradient opens it shows like this it's taken on the foreground color which is black so if you had any other colors just press D on the keyboard to restore those default colors this looks the sort of thing I'm after but it's actually the wrong way around click reverse that looks better the other important thing with this is just make sure we are using foreground to transparent that's foreground to this checkerboard background just make sure it's on that right taking a look at it that looks pretty good I'm gonna click OK and you're thinking no that doesn't look pretty good but again it's an adjustment layer adjustment layer we can come down we can change the blend mode just as you can with any normal layer changing it to soft light allows us to see through it looking better but if we double click we can do it a bit more again with the gradient fill moving it out you can see I've actually got a move tool I can click down I can actually move this gradient up and down on the image a bit like a neutral density filter and I'm gonna pull it up to that area there something like that looks pretty good I'm gonna click OK to that so it's just switching this on and off that looks better perhaps you could even add a little bit of color so to give it a little bit of color what we're going to do is we're going to click in the gradient that opens the gradient editor coming down dropping down to this here which is the color stop I'm going to click on the color stop and the color has now just come to life if we click in the window here it's going to open the select stop color right good bring in our cursor out you can see it's now a sort of eyedropper tool I'm gonna come up here because there's a little bit of color in the sky there if I click down that's the little bit of color looks pretty good we can move this across this is actually changing the color in that sky as I'm moving it over you can see I'm darkening it down a little bit you can see the shade just dropping down there a touch or two that's the original that's the current that's the new click OK to that like it click OK to that right just coming through here just taking a look just moving it up a little bit more and click OK coming together nicely just switching it on and off it's a very small but subtle change yep right done it to the sky how about the water because of course don't forget with any water it's going to reflect the color that's in the sky again it's an adjustment layer it's just like any other layer command J control J will duplicate this layer if we double click on the little layer thumbnail here we can now drop down and we can click reverse that's gonna pop it so it's around the other way 
cunning or what <laughs> right coming across I'm just going to click down I'm going to drop this down into the water a little bit more like this so just bringing down our gradient clicking OK to it coming up to the opacity because it's just like any other layer we're going to drop this down into that sort of area there I haven't got a clue what the numbers are I am just completely looking at the picture dragging it across there Great, and you can see it just gives it that little bit of colour. Again, I want to make sure that I've got more of the gradient off the screen, so I'm just going to pull it down to that part there. That's better. You can just see a little bit of grey coming through, colour on the bottom, just what I'm after. It's subtle but small changes, and that's what you want to do to a picture like this. Looking at it, I'm beginning to think that some of the, the darker areas are just a little bit too dark that's where we got the beauty we can duck back into the levels let's just double click on this and I can come into this I'm gonna grab hold of this slider and I'm gonna take this out to that area there and I'm just gonna introduce a little bit more of the lighter pixels by clicking on this slider and just bringing that across like that that looks better I think that's more in keeping now with the look again it's another great way that once you've actually done this if you did it from the enhance menu levels and you changed it once you've clicked OK and you've clicked save that's it is set in stone adjustment layers we can come in we can change we can adjust it right taking a look looking pretty good let's drop down let's just go to the top layer let's drop <laughs> drop down just thought of that we're going to go to hue saturation bet you couldn't tell coming into saturation going to click on the saturation we're going to give the saturation a bit of a shot in the arm we're just going to take it up to this sort of area there what do we got we got plus 11 right that's using the master which of course takes into red yellow green cyan etc etc I'm gonna click on red I'm gonna bring my cursor out and I'm gonna click up the eyedropper tool first now I'm gonna bring my eyedropper tool out there's a nice bit of red in the roof of the building here if we click down just watch these have jumped across a bit now we're working purely on the red if I just grab hold of this and drop it down you can see the way it's just taken that red out we're going to give that red just a bit of a shot like that you're also changing the colors very slightly in those oranges there which is nice that's giving it a nice look to it looking pretty good again the little eye icon down the bottom here you can just see the before and the after again it is very subtle but it's making all the difference to the picture just taking a look there it is all of this is in adjustment layers all of this is completely adjustable you need to go to file you need to go to save as and save it as uh, uh, what's the name of the place again oh yeah Prague by John that's the folder it came from Photoshop this is the important thing here it's a Photoshop file so it's going to be a dot PSD oh it's changed the name again now right so it's going to be a dot PSD file in layers make sure that's ticked as well click save it's now come across you'll notice the way that's changed that's brilliant because you can actually close it down give it a few days come back go to file go to your open recent wherever there it is there if we click on it there it is and there's all the adjustment layers that have come in so if you want to change anything you can for example if I want to change this gradient one here you can I can come in I can just make some alteration on that's better <laughs> I just saw the way the lighting was coming up there that looks pretty good don't forget you can also click in the window and you can put in sky so you can actually name these as you're going along you can name this one water so you know exactly what you're doing to it but that is the beauty adjustment layers are fantastic exactly the same in elements exactly the same in Photoshop I'd use them the same way it really is a great way of working but this is the picture we've been working on just going to change it to a black screen sometimes I think it's better to look at the colors in the image when you're looking at it on a darker screen there pressing the tab key to remove all the tools command zero to open the whole image up go on give it a try it's a great way of working using the magic of adjustment layers until the next time it's happy imaging and take care